Hello, it's Denise. We are back and we are doing pasta essentials. Now I need to share with you, pasta is a very big subject, but we're gonna try to cover as much as we can. Here is what I've got. I'm starting with a filled pasta. So you know what that means, a ravioli, a tortel tortellini, something that's got cheese, spinach, something on the inside. So, Patty bought me packages of pre-done raviolis. So let's pretend this, this could be an ad or, or an editorial for this product, okay? Now, just some basics. We always buy two packages, okay? The client's paying for it or if the client sent it to you, you wanna have choices. I've said that before, but it bears repeating. I have a dish that I've already picked out. This is gonna be my hero dish. And while I was sitting here waiting for the girls to adjust the sound, in my open package of pasta, I took out 12 because that looked just about what would fill my bowl. Now, the reason I do that is I, I need to know that when I cook this entire package, I need to get at least the ones that the surface, the camera sees, so that's about eight of them, that I can get eight really good raviolis out of the package. Okay, because some won't be, some will split, some, is, some are already wrinkled, some are broken. So that's why you always need to buy more than you need. Now, I love this little dish. I'm going, I've already built a set over on the dining room table and you'll see it in the set. And this is gonna be my finished hero. So at the moment, what I've done is this. I have right here in case, and we can take a picture of it and post it, but. When we're styling any commercials, infomercials, editorial work, if there's three stylists there, Cindy, Patty, and I, all of us working together, or when Cindy and Patty work, we have our own burners, okay? So I've got a little butane burner here. So that way I don't have to go to the stove, okay? Less steps during the day, and also I can control it. So even, it's not just for this video, I have this burner here so that I can be contained on my station. Now, most of the time when people come to work for us, the hardest thing is they don't know how to turn the burner on, but it's a flip and you get it. And we'll, we'll show you um, the can that goes in here, okay? So that you can see, you buy, it's a camping stove is what this is. So I put water in my pan. And the reason why I'll put these in first and then the rest of this package, I can put them all in at once because these are small. If it was the big raviolis, I wouldn't be able to. But I want you to know the reason you're watching me cook this pasta is this. The moment this pasta changes color a tiny bit, I'm gonna pull it out and dry them. Okay, I don't have to wait until they're entirely cooked. What happens when the pasta is entirely cooked? They become more fragile. I could lose the filling. Okay, so I'm just going to keep my eye on these. And the most essential thing to this is a slotted spoon. I can't put these into a strainer or push them out, you know, because I could break them. So I'm trying to take my fragile pasta and these are just about, see, it just has to turn color. They do not need to be cooked all the way through. We're gonna, I'm gonna mention this again. They're just about ready to come out. I have a paper towel here. I'm gonna put them on the paper towel. Then I'll spritz them with a little oil. Then I'm gonna massage them. Now, people say, oh no, you can never put oil on pasta because the sauce won't clean. Well, we're not eat. You know, the rules for food styling are different than when you cook for an edible dinner, okay? Now, those look, those look great, okay? So what was that? A minute, a minute and a half, two minutes? If sometimes we just keep the burners next to us. If all of a sudden you need to stick this back in hot water or you need to 
saute two extra mushrooms for a finished dish. That's why we have the burners. So you're not running to the back. I'm getting, reaching for another paper towel. You're not running to the back. I've worked in studios where the kitchen, it's a football field away from the set. And let me tell you, you get your, you get your steps in. And, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, except at the end of the day, if you've done 10 shots, you've used a lot of your energy walking instead of being creative. Okay, so that's, you're always, that's why I'm sitting down today. I'm always trying to save my energy. And if you, and let me tell you something. Many, many years ago, I was at James Beard Award, and this is, most of you won't know him, but he was a famous chef. He was the, at the, uh, the tower that, what was the name of the tower, girls, that the Nixon broke into? Water, Watergate. <laughs> that was easy. He is Jean-Pierre Paladin, Jean Paladin, but he won a huge award from the James Beard Award. And when he stood up on the podium and everybody said, what are your words of wisdom to all of us? He said, wear good shoes. <laughs> so I say the same thing to you now. If you can sit down when you're styling, it will save your back, your hips, your legs. All right, here I've got pretty little raviolis, barely cooked so that they're not gonna split. Now, what I'm gonna do, they're cooling. Do they have a good side and a bad side? Absolutely. We want the edges to all be perfect. These look pretty good. So I'm gonna let them cool. And I already told you, I had decided that I would need about a dozen. So that's easy. On an account like this, in the day and age of blogging and Instagram, all of these companies have their own Instagram account, okay? If I were you and I wanted to go after a particular account, I would style a gorgeous photograph for them, shoot it if you're a photographer, get a friend to shoot it if they're the photographer, and I would tag them in, the, in your ha hashtags. I'd try to get that photograph in front of the people that own that company or the director of marketing, okay? Maybe you make up a little story about how you serve it. Maybe you give them a recipe. Now, some of you are already doing this, and my hat's off to you. I originally... One of my first big clients was Contadina Pasta, and we got it. This is in the olden days. The photographer and I went to the studio. We shot two beautiful displays of their pasta, and then we sent it to them, okay? Now, I have to tell you something. This was even before email, so we had to make colored copies. I know. I was in a covered wagon. We had to send colored copies to them that we had printed out, but let me tell you something. We got the account. Okay, so all I'm saying is every day in our handbook, people in the handbook group, people ask about, Denise, why don't you teach a business course? Why don't you? Well, I could, but you know what? I've done that. And I'm going to tell you this. Food styling is about sales. And that's all I'm going to say. You have to sell. So how you get, you cannot wait for the phone to call. Okay, so that's my lecture for today as we get into pasta. But this account, when I got Contadina, I cannot tell you how it opened up my career, okay? Because these were national ads and all of a sudden other national companies were calling us. So that's why I share that with you. Okay, now here I got some Pam. I'm gonna spray the Pam on my little raviolis right there. D don't, can't spray too much. And this is a big trick to pasta. And this is with any pasta you're making, you guys, okay? As you will see when we do a spaghetti or something different. I have this lovely bowl. I'm gonna take Crisco and I'm gonna make a foundation. What happens to pasta, salads, things like that in a bowl? They collapse. Okay, so after they sit there for a while, well, why do they have to sit there for a while? Because maybe the photographer uh, is having technical problems. Maybe the light's changing. Maybe the client decide. you know, we have clients sometimes you put that all of a sudden want to have a meeting, huh? 
and the food sitting in the set. So there's all sorts of things that happen to you, oops, sorry, that happen to you and you can't control. But you do know that chances are the pasta is gonna sink, okay, when it sits. So now I use Crisco. It's probably an age thing. <laughs> I use Crisco. Cindy and Patty often use, ah, uh, can she reach it? Yes. Cindy and Patty will make a base of mashed potatoes. So you buy instant mashed potatoes. Thank you, Miss Cindy. The, when Lurch's hand comes in, that's Miss Cindy moving or something. It cracks me up when I watch these later girls. I love them. Sometimes they're edited out, sometimes they're not. Mashed potatoes, instant mashed potatoes. Again, goes on your receipt to the client. You make up a batch and you can use that for anything you need, okay, as a base. Sometimes we use masa. Masa dries out, as Cindy says. Now, the only reason I usually use Crisco is because it's already made, okay? Do I have time? It depends how many assistants, how many stylists are working that time. Do you have time to make the instant mashed potatoes? Well, it just depends how many shots you're trying to get done. So now here's my base. Okay, almost ready. Now, I am making my story of this pasta for the company. This would be an ad or an editorial. It could be an editorial if they got space. I don't know if people, I'm sure you all know this. You can buy ad space, okay? You see them all the time now in magazines, it's advertisements. So you could give them a recipe, you could suck up to them a little bit. You could talk about a 10 minute dinner or it's almost as good as what your grandmother made or the memories that it brings to you, but you have five children and you volunteer on the weekend. So you possibly, you can't make your own okay. ravioli. That's it. I am going to serve these ravioli over some arugula. Now, why? Because that's what I'm used to because my grandmother always served, not always, but lots of times the way to stretch the handmade raviolis was to serve it over cannelloni beans or serve it over arugula. Um, and it gives, of course, the spicy arugula cuts the cheesy raviolis. So I'm gonna put some in my base right now, which is what I've done. Now, the raviolis, I need to pick out 12 of the best ones. Now, this one doesn't have a good corner. Okay, what I'm doing right now is massaging. I'm pushing it from the back. Can you see that? To keep the filling to the top and I'm massaging my raviolis, okay? If there's a little end on one of them you don't like, we can go and take that with scissors, but these top, the ones on the bottom are not as important is the ones that are gonna be right in front of the camera. Now, you can see, let me turn it over, see where the rigid, probably where it came off the line. This ravioli, not good, okay? Not good, it's got a tear, it's got a dip, divot, like in golf. This one is uneven, look at how uneven that is. But I can manipulate this ravioli if I need to. And exactly what I'm doing by pushing the filling to the side. So I'm literally massaging the raviolis to get them the way I want them to be, okay? This, I've said it in another video, but I, it's bare as repeating. Food is not as fragile as it looks. And I have found the more I touch it or massage it or manipulate it, the better it's gonna look. I can change the entire shape. Someone posted in our group some pasta, just like this, filled, and that was so, they had already collapsed, okay? They were, probably because she cooked them so long. And I said to her, just take them out and feel them and massage them and push the filling to the center so you don't have that sunken look of pasta. I'm not sure she understood. What leads me to this, and this is, again, if this was, if you were shooting this for the company, they probably would have sent you two cases of these raviolis. They could, they might have sent you a thousand pieces of the raviolis. So you have the, the product to, 
to pick from. Okay, so it's not a budget issue. It's not, I didn't have, I hear stylists say all the time, oh, I didn't have enough product. Well, was that because you didn't buy enough or because the client didn't send enough or you, you know, you underestimated what you were going to need. It's always better to have too much. Okay. Can you, oh yeah, you guys can see what I'm doing here. Now, the one highlight that's not good, I can see it right there, but I can fix him later, okay? Because now what happens when we get in the set? Something like that. If that highlight's not good, I'll, I can conceal it. I may just take him out. See, he's just not a good shape. So I'm gonna take him out. Better. Okay. Now we'll put one, if it's too much, you guys, one of the things again, if it is too much or you don't need it or not enough, you just cut it in half. Sometimes you only need a half piece because if you put a whole piece, it will lift something up too much, okay? Now, I'm gonna fool, arugula. This arugula was fresh and beautiful. If it starts to wilt, you take fruit fresh from the grocery store where you, when you make pies, there's fruit fresh so that your pies don't, the apples don't turn in color like that. You take fruit fresh, you put it in cold water with some ice cubes, you put your greens in there and those greens will stay nice all day long. Okay, now the oil from my fingertips and the pasta is like the perfect, it's perfect. So I can oil up the leaves a little bit too. Now, what, ha what is this doing? What is the one, what's the hardest part of pasta, you guys? Is it, it all blends into itself, okay? Things that are all the same, it's hard to get a shape. So what I'm doing by having arugula, what else could it be? It could be green onions. It could be shrimp. It could be herb leaves. It could be a million different things that will give me, to, to give me definition. Okay, does that, I hope that makes sense to people. Let me show you one other thing since we're talking about herbs because that was the idea behind having this. These are living herbs at the grocery store. You can see they're still, in their dirt. An herb like this or an herb in a pot will last three times as long in a day as a herb that's dried in a box that you bought at the store, okay? So whenever we can, we're looking for this because it's a fresher product to use. Herbs fall apart and they dry out and, you know, then sometimes you can't find them, but that's a whole nother story. Now, okay. I need one more here in front. Now, when we get into our little pretend set, what we're looking at is, do I need, um, I've got a pair of tweezers. Do I need to adjust it from an overhead to a three quarters? Maybe, maybe it's just the props. Have I decided already what the front of it is? Yes, it's right here. I'm going to have it right here. This is now my front. And I have black pepper, I have Parmesan cheese, and I have some little, a dice of red pepper that I can sprinkle on here. The other thing you're always thinking of is the proportion. While I was put, picking through my arugula, I'm looking for smaller, more delicate leaves so they don't dwarf my ravioli, okay? Now, I feel like we're making these poor people watch paint dry. <laughs> ah! Is this as boring as I think it is? Maybe I, I'm telling you, 
I could tell some off-color story, but that sometimes Cindy, sometimes I get in trouble with Cindy. Now let's see. Oh, okay. Well, I'm trying to think of the worst pasta. I was trying to think this morning. What's the worst pasta story that I ever had? But actually, pasta styling to me has always been fun. I've never disliked it because I know pasta and I don't find it difficult. And it's just the shapes. You have to think about the shape. If this was, I may have too much green. I may not need that piece when I'm looking down on it. The hardest thing is to style meatballs in red sauce. Ugh, difficult, but we, we'll show you some of those sauces and some of those tricks. All right, now I'm gonna tell you something, girls. This could be, all I'm gonna do to this, I will clean the edge of my, I've got a cotton ball here. I will clean the edge of my bowl, but also I'll probably do that again in this set. I do have cheese, some grated cheese. Now to get the cheese, this is what I've got. These long, pretty strings, it's real Parmesan. This is the cheese grater I use, okay? You can see it, hand over it like that. Now, I can't do it like that because it'll go all over and it won't be controlled enough. So I'm gonna take some pieces of it and sprinkle a few like that, okay? Have this with me when I get to the set. Oh, that hides like 10 million flaws. And I also have absolutely beautiful roasted red bell pepper that has been cut in a brunoise, which means it's tiny, it's a little dice. So I'm gonna put a few of these in here. Years ago, when Cindy came to work and we were doing, remember we were doing the infomercial with that man, Chef Tony? He was a very nice man. It was a very difficult shoot because the director was a crazy as a loon. And, and when I say that, and people don't always understand it, the man was screaming at people so much that cameramen were quitting. Cameramen never quit. <laughs> that was a crazy day. But Chef Tony, we had pasta dish after pasta dish, and Cindy kept saying, how can you do that so fast? I said, just drop it on the plate. Don't forget, it's only food. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, I usually make a symmetry of things like that. You don't just clop it on. You kind of look to see where you have an open space or where the color will be appreciated. If you want it to be less style and you just want to drop it, do that. Okay, but I like it like this. And then when I look at it through the camera's eye, I will decide if it's too styled or if it's fine the way it is. All right. Now. Would you leave black pepper for at the end? No, Cindy is asking for black crap, crap pepper. Yes, but here's the gig. I'm gonna have to show you how to crack it if you don't know how, or Cindy, just pass me that. Let me just show people and we'll, I mean, I'll just. <clears throat> okay, here's the thing. I buy peppercorns. Now, let me tell you something. This, this is almost always in the trunk of somebody's car. So we have whole fresh peppercorns. I've got a little doll to do it in. This is one of the first things you ever use in culinary school. You pull the, peppercorns, you put them on the cutting board. You don't need many. And then I'm going to crush those with the back of a frying pan. Now, why would I do that instead of a grinder? Because I can't, I'm going to follow the peppercorns, Cindy. If I use what's out of a grinder, it looks like sand, okay? When you sometimes put just ground pepper out of a grinder, on stuff, it looks like sand or dirt. It doesn't look like pepper. So I'm trying to control the size. 
Look at this. Now, when you look at these, you can tell this is ground pepper, okay? There isn't a question that it's ground pepper. So I want, I want to make my own. Again, sometimes people, I see it and, and then they say, oh, the pepper didn't look it after I sprinkled it on. Well, sure, that happens because the pepper didn't look like pepper then. It looked like sand or even worse, dirt. Okay, better. Oh my God. Oh, and of course, depending how big, if you're working by yourself, you get stuck doing it. Look how much better. I had to put both my weight on it. I was being a wimp. Um, but this is an excellent job for an intern in your kitchen. <laughs> or, you know, people all the time, let me tell you something in styling. And many of you, if you don't know this, one, yes, you can get an intern from a culinary school near your, your studio or your office. Two, there are all sorts of people in the world that think it would be the most glamorous and wonderful job to be a food stylist. And isn't that sweet? And you want them to think that. So when they come to work for you, you can keep the illusion up for what? 10, 15 minutes, girls, is that what it is? Now, and I need to tell you this, once I don't need any more oil on my but I'll spritz it with a little water. Once we hired an uh, from a school. She had taught nursery school. We thought she, I thought anybody that can teach nursery school can do food styling. Olga, Hilda, I've forgotten her name, but Cindy knows who I'm talking about. The bottom line is from the moment she got there, she complained. She complained about how cold it was in the grocery store when she went shopping. She complained about, she had never done that much shopping. She complained about, she had to chop the onions. Anyway, she complained about everything. Now, she didn't last long. Okay, I just gave my, she did not last long. Matter of fact, she lasted the three days we needed her. And then I walked her to the car and I said, oh, Helga, Olga, whatever her name was. I have good news and bad news. She said, what's the, what's the good news? I said, you're going to be free to go somewhere else for your internship. I said, the bad news is, is you can't come back to us. Because Helga, Olga, whatever her name was, all she did was complain. Okay, She didn't understand that your job is to do finite, small, uh, sometimes annoying jobs. It's not a glamorous job. But if you love it, you're gonna love it, okay? Not everyone is really, um, has the personality to be a food stylist. Yeah. Here's what I wanna do. You can see it. I have built it. This is, you guys, this is my front, okay? So we're gonna take it into our mini set and see how it looks. I will take the arugula, the cheese, the red bell pepper and my tweezers and a spritzer with me to the set. And usually that's all on a tray and we call it a set tray and the crushed black pepper because we'll do the rest of the finishing work to the camera in the set. All righty, here we are at our set. I had already set up my props. I've got a hero to put into the set now. Now I built this with this in front. Now I'll tell you why. Three quarters angle, I'm looking, I don't see any holes. What you're looking for lots of times, you see an image when you're working so closely on it, you don't notice. The minute they put it up, you can see this gigantic hole on the computer, okay? So you don't wanna see things that are inside. It's like going into a cave and finding out something ugly is there. So let me put that down. Now, what else have I got? I've got crock cheese. And I've got some arugula that I protected with a wet paper towel so it could sit here for a while. I have a wine glass. Now, you never pour the wine <clears throat> before you're in the set. Most of the time, a, a third of a glass is enough, okay? And we'll take a look at that. You can always add more, but you start out low, you guys, so in case there's a problem, you don't have to throw it out, wash the glass, you know the drill. Now, 
hopefully. And if you don't know the drill, you're learning the drill. Let me get rid of that. Now, pretty, I have some of the cracked black pepper that I'm gonna sprinkle a couple on. Okay, oh, that's pretty. Now, not too many, again, I can always, after I see it through the camera, add more. The last thing I'm gonna do, when I oiled those in the beginning, it was enough, I'll wet it with a little, this is plain old water. I'm gonna take my sponge, I'm gonna go around the edge, okay? If you don't like these crossed, or if you wanted them to show up, you put a little bit of tacky wax. Actually, I kinda like that. You don't want so much of the surface of the spoon because otherwise uh, you're gonna see the camera and the camera operator or the photographer and the stylist in the spoon. That's what Delling spray is for, okay? That's, I think, one of the biggest mistakes I see people that are new to this. You can see them in the spoon. So that, this is where we're at at the moment, okay? Can we do an overhead? You know what? When I look at my dish with an overhead, I can, Keep this the same way, but this one big black pepper is not so good for the overhead. So I'll just, sometimes it's just easier to try to push him and hide him than it is to remove him. Now, what else could we do? Simple, don't like this napkin? You have next to your, on your set, you have a stack of other napkins. You can have it folded and pressed. You can, the gold is pretty. The gold plays into the egg that's in the pasta, okay? So what you're doing is mimicking the, the now, I like monochromatic. Not everyone does. Cindy knows. I will go with something where it's very monochromatic, and I like it, but you need good lighting. I think the white, plain white napkin looks fancier, okay? I kind of love the gold. Then with drama, if we're looking for drama, we could go with a beige that picks up on this placemat. Kind of fun. And the last one we want to look at, look at the black. The black is kind of fun. Now, it is in style right now to not have a folded napkin, to not have a ironed napkin, to just make it free form. And you know what? This is pretty with the pattern, actually. This pattern that has the gold highlights in it is kind of gorgeous with that, the plate brim. Uh, this is my, I mean, I've done them. We have to do them, you guys, you do them. Because if Instagram is doing it, then every client, everyone says, oh, Denise, I don't want the napkin, so, okay. So we'll make it snake-like, or I don't like the, I'm glad the cheese caught, cloth phase past and the reason for that is simple cheesecloth isn't supposed to be on your dining table okay cheesecloth is a workhorse in your kitchen but that doesn't make sense to the story to me so you get my drift always if now how do we change this photograph right now if we wanted to one take the other plate away two take the cheese and the we'll take the cheese and the arugula away and we're just gonna tear some bread, okay? Makes it much more casual. So we can take that away. We can take that away. Put some bread. If you don't want to have alcohol, sometimes you're working in places and the client will say to you, oh, we can't have any alcohol in the shot, okay? Disney's really funky about alcohol. Um, and so then what could you put there? You could put sparkling water with a piece of lemon or lime. Uh, you could work, another a white wine would also work if you like that. I just went with the red wine to make it more dramatic against the pale pasta, okay? So that was, that's fun. We had fun. So that's kind of, now, should I move, I'll move, I'm sorry, Miss Cindy, should I move those so they're not in the final shot? What a bad stylist I was. There we go. Now this is natural pretty light coming right in from my dining room table. That's pretty nice, Miss Cindy. Hi, we're back. We did our raviolis, our filled stuffed pasta. 
And to be honest with you, we had to stop and eat lunch because we were all starving because we're all, we all get up early. So we had lunch and then looky here to the right, your right, my left, camera left, your right. The elves, Cindy and Patty styled some beautiful pasta dishes. So the, of other examples of pasta. Now, a couple of things to point out. All of the pasta came today already cooked, and you saw me in the last part of the video, undercooked. And then you can put it in a baggie, oil it, and hold it overnight. So if you have a big shoot and you're getting, you need to get eight, 10, 12 photos done in a day, you know how important the day before prep is. Now, your client sometimes won't pay for it. Oh, it's just a couple of dishes. Can't you do it all at the studio, really? No, you can't. So if I were you, I'd always, part of sales is explaining to your client what needs to get done, how long it takes, and the kind of job that you can do with the correct time, okay? It, when you're rushed, it, it, it's never gonna look that good. Trust me, it's just the, it's the what it is. Sometimes when we have done cookbooks and at the end of the 70 photographs, when the book is laid out and Cindy and I get it, we can point to the two or three photographs that we shot at the end of a 10, you know, a 10 or 12 or 14 hour day after 14 days in a row because the film looks tired because we were tired. You do your best, but it's not easy. Okay, so we have, now look at this. Every picture tells a story. I'm gonna hold this up for you. This is Patty's, can you see that? Ooh. Now, I would call this rich hippie. <laughs> this is the most beautiful pottery bowl. It's popper dill, large ribbons of pasta that you don't get everywhere, little asparagus tips, and beautiful shrimp. Now, if you don't have the opportunity to work with a lot of seafood, if you're creating your own portfolio, I would spend the money on some seafood. It's naturally beautiful to the camera. Look at the color. Those shrimp came out of the package just like that, okay? And we'll talk about that. So, and a handmade plate by Patty's husband, Bob. This is so beautiful. And she put some pesto on the noodles. So we've got pesto represented, gorgeous. This is Cindy's All American. Are you ready for this? Look at that. This is the paper this is the article in your newspaper that says things like my grandmother's meatballs and how I updated it for my busy family. This would be a wonderful piece for something like that. So it's meatballs and spaghetti. Who doesn't like meatballs and spaghetti? I think the thing to point out to you is this, there's not a lot of sauce. So Cindy individually coated each strand, okay? And then nestled the meatballs in it so that there was definition. Squeeze bottle. Now, what did I, I've said this so many times, but it's bears repeating. Less is more in the beginning. You put less, less, less. Now, if the client said, oh, Denise, we need more sauce, you put it in a squeeze bottle and you put some more sauce on it, okay? Easy to add not easy to take things back. So that's how, but when you see, this comes up all the time, when you see a big thick sauce with meatballs in it, there's no definition between the meatballs and the sauce, okay? So less, let's just show those off. Now, we just wanted you to see something. These meatballs came this way out of the package. This is Trader Joe's product. Um, Fully cooked, flame broiled. I don't know about that, but I know that they're fully cooked. So I show this to you for one reason. Again, if you're working on your portfolio, you don't have to make this stuff, okay? You can buy it, get five or six dishes done in an afternoon. Um, the nicest thing you can do is if a neighbor likes to help you or someone's interesting, sure, they come and help clean up behind you so it's not so exhausting. To do all this work with only one person is difficult. I'll give you that. When I worked alone the first 10 years of my career as a food stylist and you had to shop 
get to the studio, prep all the food, stop, run back and forth, work with the photographer, work with the client, break it all down, do all the dishes, repack your car and drive home. And usually there'd be a stop at one of the homeless shelters so I could give the extra food to it. It's, it's a long and difficult process. That's why, again, with sales, you want to have an assistant. Okay, it'll make your life so much easier. Now, and this is the third one. Look how fun this is, and here's why. And see, Cindy's got a little piece of paper underneath there. Look at that. Now, what are we telling you about this? This is a prop-driven seafood with turquoise. Okay, that bright orange shrimp with turquoise. You can't, you can't fail. Okay, now Cindy used penny pasta here. If you notice, this is the front. You aren't looking in any of the holes of the pasta because much like looking, you just don't want to, okay? So that's a beautiful dish with some fresh herbs and peppers. Did you false bottom that bowl, Miss Cindy? Of course she did. We've talked about false bottoming and why it's a more stable environment for your food. Okay, the pasta would collapse eventually. So if you stabilize it, it gives you a longer time under the lights. Now, one more thing. These are two different shrimps, both bought. These came out of the package like this. We got them at Trader Joe's. The color is beautiful. These are the normal shrimp you get, okay? Now, not a big difference in cost, just a difference in the shrimp. So when you get a shrimp like this, you need to put it in a saute pan. You need to, we had this discussion in our group recently. Paprika is your friend for shrimp, okay? So you make pap paprika and oil and you can paint those shrimp to get them that color. These were beautiful. You could take them right out of the package. Now, one more thing just to show you, bowl, a bowl, a deep dish. I used a bowl last time. Now, I love this. Now the girls are making me do this like this. I've never done it this way. I've always false bottom, but look what they put in there. They put in little pieces of uncooked pasta. And that's how I'm, what I'm gonna wrap around it to make a haze nest. I usually, a hay nest, so a bird nest. I usually, you guys, and I take two or three pieces of time, I usually have used toothpicks if I needed to secure it. But the girls looked at me and said, oh, we just did a big shoot and we used raw pasta. I said, all right, I'm up for the challenge. Now, I'm just gonna go like this and start wrapping some pasta. Most, this is a, how things change. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Things can be, don't have to be, when I came up being a food stylist, it was inappropriate. You would have thought you'd murdered someone if the camera saw the ends of the pasta. Can you imagine? And I was speaking at a big conference in those days. It was called Food on Film. And I was the new kid on the block. And I said to the crowd of home economists, here I was a chef. I didn't wear ugly shoes. They didn't know what to make of me. And I said, oh, I kind of love to see the loose ends of pasta. The room got quiet. <laughs> you saw them all going, yep. No one asked me out for a drink after my presentation. <laughs> I was banned. But then I learned that why? Because pasta companies had to change too. Okay, your client. Now it happens faster. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Sometimes your client says, oh, we saw this on Instagram. And you as the stylist may realize that you can't create that in one easy sphere, okay? That it will take longer than they're thinking. I haven't gotten to my pasta pieces yet, Cindy. I'm waiting. <laughs> it's gonna help me when I get there. Okay, okay. Now, again, and I'll take my tweezers and I'll clean the edge of my plate. And all I was gonna do with this, you guys, was put a little bit of pesto um, in a cup with a little bit of oil and do a drizzle so that I wasn't coating my pasta this time. I was using And of course, the deal is, is to cover up your 
Um, we have a shot like this, Cindy. Now, this is something else I haven't told people. When you buy a video, you're going to get a downloadable essential sheet, okay? So this is um, a brief synopsis of everything that happens in the video. It's telling you about uh, shopping. It tells you about supplies and kitchen equipment. And then there's styling tips. So this was what we were hoping would be an added value for people. And, and to be perfectly honest, not an entire book. And the reason, and we all know, you, I'm sure you know this, everyone learns differently. Some people need to see it done. Some people need to do it before they get it. Some people can read it, but they don't want to read too much because that's not their strong. Some people only read, only listen in their, their audio learners. And my example of this is when I got to the Culinary Academy, I have, I could read about making a Bernays or read about um, a Hollandaise sauce all night long. And I didn't understand what they were talking about it. And then the first time I saw a chef make it, I thought, oh, okay, you just need a whisk. You need some egg yolks. You, you melt the hot butter. But it was funny that by reading it, I couldn't envision it. And then the first time I saw a chef make it, I thought, oh, I get what they're talking about. Okay, girls, now is that is that getting high enough? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Well, this is fun with the raw spaghetti. I love that you taught me something today. <laughs> Thank you. And then if you needed to, if you've already covered it, you can just push them in, I guess. There's one, they're on the picture on the essential sheet. Cindy, you know what's, and this is something just, if you look, when you look at these yourself, some of these images are 10 years old, okay? Now, for a cookbook, for an editorial page, they should be timeless. Okay, so I understand trends and I think it's fabulous when people, people want to do something different. God bless them. And the clients like them, God bless them. But will it hold up? That's all I ever, when I see a trend in food styling, I think, what's that going to look like in a year? Okay, like duck lips. <laughs> what's that going to look like in a year? Oh, I like it, Cindy. I get it. Like to me. Now, we now if you want to, there's a couple of things we can do here. If you don't want to struggle too much, these couple of that are just sticking out, I'm going to cut them off. If you can stick them in, great. I've decided what my front is. Could I do an over? I can do an over shot with this also if I cover up the little bit of Crisco I can see right at the top. So another piece of pasta or a leaf, sorry, would do that. Again, undercooked pasta with a little bit of oil. If any of you have used, if you're gluten-free, if you've cooked soba noodles, if you've done whole wheat, you know that if you cook those noodles, too long, they just fall apart, okay? Cindy and I helped develop recipes for South Beach, South Beach, Summer Size, and Atkins. That was before keto, that was before, but it was gluten-free. And do you remember the first gluten-free noodles that came to us, Cindy? They, we put them in the water and they just fell apart. They, and I kept saying, I don't think people are gonna buy this. We'd skim them out. And then we realized we could almost, those first ones, we could only kind of run them under hot water to make. So as we were writing directions for people, which is what good recipe development's about, you're trying to save the consumer a whole lot of trouble. Especially if they've got three kids, they've gone to the store, they've spent their money budget, and now they have no dinner. Okay, this is my front. What are you passing me, some herbs, Miss Cindy? Thank you. And I'm just going to clean my edge, but before I would clean it again with some Windex, 
before we get it in front of the camera. Oh, this is kind of fun. Now I kind of like seeing the ends of that. And what I thought I'd do is take a little bit of your pesto and mix it with some vegetable oil. This isn't the greenest, this, I know this company, this isn't the greenest pesto I've already ever seen. If we wanted it, there are greener ones. Now, what else can you do to make it greener if you want it greener? Put it in the blender with some parsley leaves, okay? Or put the parsley leaves in the blender, make a little paste and stick it in here. You'll get it much greener. Um, you could put a couple of drops of food coloring in here, green food coloring. Just be gentle when you use food coloring. And the other thing is, if this needed to sit out for a long time, you can chop up in the blender again, um, some vitamin C tablets and stick that in your pesto and it won't turn that nasty brown, okay? Once, do you remember, Cindy, we were doing this, selling a blender, because you're always selling something with food. That's what story do you want to tell? So we were selling this big fancy blender. It was like a $500 blender, remember? And I remember thinking, is anybody going to spend $500 on a blender? But the bottom line was we had to make the pesto. He pushed the button on the blender and then it filled with the pesto. And we had to make it look vibrant and beautiful. And we filled up little vitamin tablets remember cindy with vitamin c and green food coloring and no one knew it so when it went off it 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 got chopped up in the blender and looked absolutely beautiful that was a big cheat <laughs> that was a big cheat because what happens is the producer who knows very little about the product to be honest most of the time unless his money's involved if their money's involved then if they've developed it, then they know what the machine does. But if they don't have money in it and they're just on a you know thing, they don't know what the, um, the machine does. They don't know what the food looks like. So then sometimes on set, which is the worst thing that can happen to the stylist, they say things like, well, that's not what I thought it was gonna be, or I thought it would be more impressive or Ugh, that brown color. You kind of, I would say the biggest thing and this, I always say this about food styling. It's not the food, it's the client. <laughs> That's the hard part. But the other thing is you really have to be someone who thinks on their feet, okay? It's the most important thing. And when the client says something to you that is utterly ridiculous, okay? Um, you have to be able to keep a straight face and look at them. My personal favorite was I was working, worked for years. Cindy and I worked for years for a big cheese company here in Los Angeles. And the, not the owner, but the owner's daughters were in charge of the photo shoot. And they were always late and they were princesses. I called them the cheese princesses. And they would arrive and every once in a while they would make a request just like this. <gasps> Denise, we were doing a cheese pull and you know what a pull is. They'd say, can you make the cheese more twirly like an ice skater? And I stood there as she was reeking. She'd been three and a half hours late to the shoot. She smelled of Bulgari perfume way too much um, because she'd been at the gym and she didn't know she'd be so late to the shoot. And she said, I want it to be curly, like a skater. Because you pull the cheese off the nachos. And I looked at her and I said, you know what? I understand what you're saying. So let me go in the back because I'm not sure that this cheese knows how to skate. And that was it. And then she said, oh, I see what you're saying. I said, okay, great. So we did a pull. Remember, Cindy, that one? I may have rolled my eyes when I got to the back. Now, this is kind of pretty. It's simple. It's pretty. If we wanted some color, I might blister some red tomatoes. Do you know what I mean? And throw a couple of tomatoes. And then when I get in the set and I'm really looking through the camera, I would give it more pesto. Okay. Um, but this can be shot from overhead. And you would what you would do again, some of this finishing work, you don't want to move your plate after you've touched it like this because you don't want it to run. It's much prettier with a little 
and it needs just a little bit of a spritz of oil, which we took away, you guys, when we were doing the plates after lunch. There we go. And we'll just add a little bit of Pam to this. Why do we use Pam, you ask? We use Pam because it's an aerosol. It gets foamy, you spray it with some water and the foam go goes away. We use Pam, thank you, Miss City. And here's the reason you're filling up, imagine this, the food has pores, okay? And if you don't fill up the pores with oil, does it dry out and die faster? Absolutely. So while you're oiling things, you don't want it to be um, so shiny that, you know, ridiculous, but you want to, but usually by the time you put some oil on it, by the time it sat for a half an hour or 10 minutes, let's say, under the lights, the oil is at a perfect thing, but it's protecting the food. And that's something I don't think that people new to the industry. Cindy has given me some cracked pepper. I'm not into that, but I'm into the cheese. I'm not even in, maybe I just put the little bit of cheese around the edge. bird's nest with cheese. But anyway, you get the drift. It's all in the other. Yeah, that's pretty. I wish my pesto was a little greener, but beggars can't be choosers. Okay. Now, did I cover it? I covered the different types of products. I covered some props and colors. I covered shopping is always the most important thing, you guys. You cannot get to a shoot and not have choices. Okay. And also, that's the most fun part for the stylist, okay? Is that you have some choices. Yes. Can you talk about building things for overhead working building them for Sure. Okay, we'll pick that up. Now, Cindy just asked me. Now, here's an example. You're seeing it like that. This was built for three quarters, okay? There's a couple of issues with the camera angle that people should think about. Where is the piece of film going to be used? Like most of the time, the image, most of the time your picture is going to be vertical, okay? If you're doing a horizontal picture, that takes more product, just think about it. It's like thinking two pages in a magazine for a horizontal sometimes instead of one page. Um, so if I'm thinking vertical, I'm thinking three quarters. So I'm looking at this, and it's the three quarter camera. I see what's important here in front. I can add, you know, a, a fork or some blistered tomatoes. Now, if I knew that it had to be overhead and only overhead, then I have to take a look at it. I'd need some sauce back here. It would need to be, the whole area would need to be perfect. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. You're gonna see everything, then you have to work on everything. I only worked on the front of this because I was in my mind, it was a three quarters shot. If this is a better example, I had to make a wedding cake out of Krispy Kreme donuts for a TV show. They only sent, I think they sent 12, 14 dozen. And the prop man had bought me like this triple layer set up for the donuts, I only had enough for the front half of the cake. So I kept saying to everyone, you can't show the back of this wedding cake because there's no donuts. Now, of course, Ellen then saw it was, it, it, she saw it and she thought it was the funniest thing and kept turning the wedding cake around to show people the magic of television. Now, so if it's down, like looking down, I may not need it to be any higher, would I? Because I'm gonna see the whole thing. If it's a three quarters, I may need this to be higher. What that really means then is, what is the perspective, three quarter shot of the camera angle, what else is in my environment that has to be in proportion to the haystack of pasta? Does that make sense? Is that make sense people? I, in our food styling group, here was exactly what happened. A woman was trying to help another, a newer student. And then she showed her picture that she'd done about a year ago of a hamburger. And 
The hamburger looked pretty good. Bun was a mess. I don't know when people don't realize that the hamburger bun, it shouldn't look like, you know, somebody sat on it. But anyway, that was a mess. But then it, it was ringed by a beer glass that was this big and a jar showing her tomato relish that she was very proud of and that looked great. But in perspective, from a three quarters angle, that hamburger should have been twice its size, okay? Because now it was dwarfed. Just like if I take this at three quarters, Cindy, and put it in a set and put a long stemmed wine glass, I can't get it all. Do you see what I'm saying? I can't get close enough and get the wine glass. That's why lots of times we use shorter glasses. So you have to really think about perspective and what, what you're selling is always, but if the hero in, the hero or the client is your pasta, then I'd be very careful about, you know, the size of things around it or something that takes the, the star away from the pasta, if that makes sense, okay? And you know it when it happens. If your plate hasn't turned out what you hoped for, um, for whatever reason, your piece of cake is lopsided or your ice cream is the wrong color or whatever. And in the back, like in this, this way we could have a pretty piece of soft out of focus at three quarters bread in the back. Do you know what I mean? Or a little jar of something or maybe more pesto in a bowl. But if someone walks up to the computer and says, oh, I love the bread. <laughs> you've missed your mark. Okay, that's all I can say to you. If someone, people are critiquing pictures and say, oh, I love that glass. That's not good news <laughs> because the picture was about the hamburger. I, I think I've said enough. Have I said enough, Miss Cindy, about that? Okay. So these were pasta essentials. Um, thank you for joining us. Of course, you can reach out to us. Uh, and if you have any questions, and I think after you've watched it and also read your essential sheet, I think you'll see that a lot of, the, I always say this, a lot of techniques in food styling repeat themselves. OK, you don't have to reinvent the wheel because pretty soon what you'll find out is your mind will be trained to false bottoming, what, it, what the camera sees. You're going to turn off the cooking part of your brain like, oh, I need salt in the water or this will look good because it might not and no one's going to taste it to the styling part of your brain, which is just about how the food looks to the camera. Well, okay, thank you. Thank you, Miss Cindy. Thank you, Miss Patty. I think we're done. Bye-bye.